hello. Hey, Tia. Hi, thank you for joining me here on The Final Frontier. We've gone international. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I'm excited we- to be here. We're doing a Zoom call, like during COVID times, only now. It's like a flashback. <laughs> it, oh, you said Ooh. flashback. You've got superpowers is what just happened. You said flashback and sent wow. your ghosts and ghouls to switch off you the light. better with that other lighting. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> it was actually just producer James falling over a plug. Um, how have you been? I haven't seen you for probably like a year. I haven't seen you since I think we were at Drag Fest. With um, that one that can't be named over there in the UK. <laughs> yes. I think that's the last time I saw you sweating it out in a, a big warehouse or something. But um, I've been great. And congratulations to you, our new winner. Thank you so much. Congratulations to you also. You won the American All-Stars. How does that feel? <laughs> Well, it's pretty much the best ever, really. It's um, as a fan of the show and being on seasons of the show and always kind of wanting to be on the All-Stars or be an All-Star. It was so exciting to go to America and be in Hollywood and to film the show. And then obviously winning is the best outcome possible. So that was amazing. That is wild because I feel like a lot of the international girlies uh, feel like you've like paved the way for like opportunities for international queens (laughs) to be on the US All-Stars. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. I hope that, um, yeah, it it just shows that, you know, if you're doing your thing and you're believing in yourself and you're investing in it and making it, you know, your priority and putting it out there in the world, that it pays off, so. I mean, we should talk about that more because I have the same kind of like vibe because the first time I did Drag Race, I was like, this will just be fun. We'll see what happens. And then the second time I was like, Maybe I should try. That might actually Mm. help. How did you like go into the different seasons? Like what was your mentality for each one? Well, each one was kind of different going into Canada's Drag Race. I was an unknown queen. I was just, you know, on my little island here doing my thing. So I went in totally terrified. I didn't know any other drag queens. I had one other drag queen friend here in Victoria. And so, yeah, it was really overwhelming. i I was a little baby drag queen. And so going back for All Stars UK versus the world, <clears throat> I felt like I had a bit more of an idea what was going on. But I was still kind of working on my polish, working on my makeup. And and then going back for All Stars, I felt like I had really elevated and I was really excited to show uh, the world and my fans how much work I had put in um, while touring and everything to, to elevate myself. Honestly, same. And then I look back at my eyebrows at the finale and I'm like, well, there's always room for improvement, you know? <laughs> I um, know. Drag is like this. I look back, it's like sometimes you look back one year, you look crazy, and then you look back three years and you're like, I look good there. I was like, what happened? <laughs> so I don't know. For yeah, me, I discovered Face up. That was the difference. <laughs> um, your run on UK versus the world, I want to talk about that because I think my favorite thing about watching you on Drag Race is, like, the authenticity of it all. Because, like, I love the fact that you were absolutely fuming. And, like, I just love to watch it. I'm like, this person isn't being like, thank you so much for a wonderful opportunity, goodbye. You were like, Um, I'm really upset. No, I was was really in my feelings. And that's part of being a clown is you're supposed to access your feelings and share your feelings and you're supposed to do it without a filter. So um, that's kind of where that comes from. It's like, I feel like when I'm on the show and when I'm, when I'm doing my thing that I, I feel like I need to give my, my full energy into what I'm feeling and then Mm. put it out there. So, you know, it's a, it's a little spicy, a little crazy, but it's also so fun. I think it's, you know, fun when you when you get to see how someone truly feels. That's really hilarious sometimes. Have I accidentally been a clown the whole time? Because that yeah. is just how I exist and live my life. Yeah, it's it's actually easier that way. <laughs> I you call it clowning, I call it anxiety. So yeah, life. <laughs> Same vibe. That's um. Now you've won. Would you go back again? I'm yeah. sure everyone's asked you that question yeah. 83,000 times. But I love it. Drag Race is the perfect combination of all the things I love. I love working under deadlines. I love working with whatever I got around me and in front of me to make shit happen. I love rising to an occasion. You know, if someone's, you know, we're underdogs, 
And so my whole life, I've been really challenged on what I can do, what I can achieve, what um, my plans are. And so when I'm, you know, when, when someone challenges me, it makes me go, okay, I'm going to show these fuckers that I can do this. And, I, and so <clears throat> I love drag because it's involving art and it's involving your own personal history and it's involving queer history and it's changing people's lives. And it's all, all a lot of fun at the same time. And you get to learn something. The whole drag, as much as it is about entertaining, it's also about like learning as an artist. How to do your mm. makeup, how to do your hair, how to communicate your ideas, how to develop routines and ideas to entertain people. And so um, every time I go to drag, it feels like you're going to like a drag school or something. Literally, RuPaul school for girls. I always right. feel like it tells me more about myself. Because I went into that first season and I was like... I can do this. I'm just going to have a fun time, but I'm a fully realized yeah. human being with complex thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And then came out of it and was like, I have no idea what's going on. Everything feels <laughs> like a panic attack. And then the second time I was like, no, I can do it. I, I know who I is now, mm. um, which is nice. Everyone takes something different away from it. And that's yeah. why it's iconic. Yeah. No, it is amazing. And yeah, I love how much I've changed and grown and, I hope I get to do it again and, and hopefully, fingers crossed, I would be able to, to change and grow even more. Maybe I could do the splits this time. <laughs> Maybe. A high kick. Um, all winners too, that's the question. I can't wait for you to be on all winners too and for me to be 15th reserve backup <laughs> option. <laughs> Simone's dropped out. Who do we call? Blue Hydrangea. <laughs> yeah, fair play. Um, this podcast is all about sort of like fandoms and what people are a fan of. And I feel oh. like we've kind of established that we're both still genuine Drag Race fans, despite yeah. having been on and won the show. Do you yeah. have any like favorite franchises that you watch apart from apart from your own? Well, I guess I, I tend to not even really watch my own. I've only watched them. Each one I've only watched about one time as it was coming out. And then I, I never went back. So uh. I guess of all the franchises, I like whatever is put on for me. I'm not that good at making TV happen for myself. So Brady, my partner, puts TV on for me. Or if I'm on the road, <clears throat> the girls or someone on the on the tour bus will put on the show and we'll watch together. So it's, I know that's a lame ass answer, but <laughs> I, I'll watch whatever is in front of me and I'll be happy with it. <clears throat> it's a, that's a better answer than mine because I'm like, when I feel sad, I watch my finale lip sync against Hannah Condra and I cheer up again. I fully watch Do myself. You? I, I love it. <laughs> it's great. That's it's, so funny. I need to watch myself. For some reason, I just don't. I don't know what it is. Even someone sends me a video. I'm like, I'm not going to watch it. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I used to like I used to anxiously rewatch things when like if I got comments that were like Tia shouldn't have been in the top that episode I'm like let me rewatch every frame to see why oh, they think my, that you are hilarious I would never <laughs> but now I rewatch it and I'm like oh it's yeah everyone was wrong I was great <laughs> sorry yeah yeah <laughs> well baby you won so <laughs> have you been getting how do you feel about your win you know like how do you feel about all the work you put in and and how did that go for you because I know that was that was really exciting it was thank you um turn the tables I'm getting grilled um no <laughs> I I actually kind of love it because like there was that feeling that like um at the time a lot of people wanted someone else to win and by someone else, I mean literally any of the three other options in that <laughs> final. So I felt that like quite a lot. And then I realized that I was blanking out all of the love and just focusing on like, you know, one in every hundred comments was like, right. Marina should have won. And I was like, everyone right. thinks that Marina... But that's not the case. Like there's so much no. love out there that you can focus on and harness. Um, mm -hmm. But I can't lie, I did struggle a little bit. I was like, I have... Uh, accidentally won track race and it shouldn't have uh, been me but now I kind of like sit in that power a little more especially yeah. after doing a tour with like all the girls and like it was very full of love and like full of compliments for each other and all of that kind of thing so I I, mm -hmm. I sit in the power a little bit more which is nice. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, that's it's hard because we I don't know why that I'm the same way. I I can get 100,000 compliments of love and excitement and joy and all these things, but then you read that one person that's just like 
you know, feeling whatever they feel about it. And that can really stick with you. I don't know why that is, but yeah, it's a good exercise to, you know, pay them dust and to really focus on all the love that's out there for us. And there is a lot out there. So absolutely, I'm, I'm happy for you and congrats. Yeah, I think you are right about sort of like learning and like harnessing that and uh, trying to like re-educate. Like it's literally like rewiring your brain to try not to mm. focus on the negative because I feel like that is like human nature to just yeah. see that thing and be like, oh, that must be the real version. Right. But do you, do you stay away from looking at comments in general? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Work. I, every now and again, I go when I, you know, if I'm, if I can, I'm on a flight or something, I'll go through and I'll try and say hi and, and um, pay attention. But I have so much anxiety around like posting and looking and all these things. I really try to put a less energy into it if I can and just try to keep it fun and light like it used to be when it's, when you're a normal social media person you don't mm. think so much about you know what am i posting and is it the right time and is does anyone care and you know all of that stuff that goes along with putting stuff out there online so yeah i think it's we got to be kind and easy to ourselves so that's why i don't read the comments yeah the overthinking <laughs> is the bit isn't it that's like a weird shift that happens where you're like oh suddenly it feels like everything matters more just because there's more people but it, i guess it's just the same thing scaled up, right? Yeah, it really is. Live your life. Live your truth. Baby. Baby. Be you. The only way to do it. I am more, I am less, but fundamentally, I am me. To quote Hannah Conda. Oh, I like that. I, I think she should put it on a t-shirt, to be honest with you. You know, she probably is right this moment, down under. <laughs> yeah, with a crayon though. <laughs> not, not officially printed. The following is a high five moment from highfivecasino.com. Welcome to would you like a hot apple pie today? Yes, yes, yeah, I won! Woohoo! So that's a yes on the apple pie? I just went big time playing High Five Casino on my phone. Real cash prizes, free daily rewards, over 1,200 games. Yeah. So yes or no on the apple pie? Woo! I won again! I'll take that as a yes. Drive around. Have you had your High Five moment today? Only at HighFiveCasino.com. High Five Casino is a social casino. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Play responsibly. Conditions apply. See website for details. High Five Casino. <laughs> Let's move away from Drag Race. Have you okay. got any other sort of like TV shows, films, franchises uh, that you are obsessed with, that you love, that you watch and rewatch, or any particular genres? I think that was eight well, questions in one. I'm, if, I, if I'm going to watch a movie at night, I always look for scary movies. I don't know why that is. I'm like, I see that for you. Love scary movies, horror movies, things where people are afraid. <laughs> I, for some reason, as much as I love to laugh and as much as I love comedy, for some reason, when I go on Netflix, it's like, let's watch something scary. Let's watch something creepy. Let's watch something terrifying. <clears throat> so I don't know what that is about me, but I really like that. And so, but I also love watching um, like shows about cat hoarding or, <laughs> um, you know, like weird things that people do that are strange, you know, like the people like that are addicted to eating their cups or whatever. And they're just like, I can't stop. Every time I have my coffee, I just want to. And then they like chew the side of their cup and then swallow it. And you, and it's just like so funny to me. Yeah. No, I kind of, I, I love those ones. There was, I think that I saw one where someone was like, I think they drank like the liquid inside a marker pen or something like that. And mm. there's one who's addicted to sniffing baby powder. Right. I am obsessed wow. with those as well. That's like a bad drug dealer's dream. <laughs> there are a few people that I sent that clip to. I won't name names. Um, <laughs> but you all know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, the horror film thing I feel like is a real thing because I have like an obsession with watching like zombie themed content and I don't know why. But I feel like it's like a anxious people like to be scared, maybe. Right. Maybe that's what it is. There's something calming about it. I don't know. It's the weirdest thing, but... Yeah, I tend to watch or like the shows about the people in jail and then where they talk about what they did. That's always like really creepy to me. Like watching someone, you know, when you hear about a creepy story, but then to hear the creepy story from the person that did it, that was like, I, you know, dressed up like a, you know, like a big Teletubby and I killed my family and then I wore the skin around the house and it's kind of like, oh my God. <laughs> That is all I'm going to be thinking. The Teletubbies are at Dragon LA, and that's all I'm going to be thinking about now when we see them. I don't, I can't do the like 
like true crime story things, they freak me out more than like mm. a zombie attacking someone and eating their brains. Right. Yeah, I, think, I do like true crime ones too. That's freaky freaky. Okay, I would recommend on Netflix, it's a crossover moment. It's a show called Dead Set, which oh. is like zombie horror, but it all takes place in the British Big Brother house. Oh, cool. So it's like a bit reality and a bit horror. And then once and you watch that called? one, Dead Set. Dead, Dead Set, that's so funny. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll look at that. It was uh, created by Charlie Brooker, who makes Black Mirror. Ooh, that's a good one. I'm a big Black Mirror fan. Me too, yeah. I like that dystopian, creepy future. Mama, that's like my favorite thing. We're living in it at the moment, <laughs> but like I dystopian know. future, <laughs> question mark. Do you have like any favorite Black Mirror episodes? Well, there's this really creepy one that I I always tend to just, I have a really bad memory. So when people ask me my favorite things, it's usually whatever I can remember. And so, <laughs> um, so I... <laughs> Black Mirror, I like this creepy one. It was like the mom was protecting the child from seeing anything scary. Yeah. And then the mom was like overbearing, overprotecting the kid. And the kid couldn't see a barking dog. The kid couldn't see anything creepy. And then the kid uses the iPad to kill the mom. And the iPad blocks the kid from seeing its own actions as it murders their own mom for setting up these controls. The whole thing was so... Um, creepy and cool and as someone that was heavily controlled um, I kind of was a little bit satisfied <laughs> yeah it's an allegory I believe that is producer Poppy if we can check I believe it is series 3 episode oh. 5 I'm going to say Archangel I think that is correct you are crazy okay supercomputer honestly it could be series 7 episode 2 but I just said numbers right. but I think it is called I think it's called Archangel so I remember it so distinctly because it starts like, like it starts on such a small level and then it like escalates and this child's uh -huh. being exposed to nothing until finally yeah. like murder is fine to them because they can't see it. They're like, like not desensitized, the opposite of desensitized. Right. They're just shielded. Okay, with season four, episode two, I was off. But it is called Archangel. Thank you, Poppy. Wow. That's very kind. Baby. <laughs> I do honestly, I love a bit of Black Mirror. I love Black Mirror. I love any kind of like anything to do with technology and the way that it could potentially play out is curious and interesting to me because I'm I'm not that technical technical. Mm. I'm not very good at technology and downloading and all those kinds of things. So yeah, tech technology is already kind of freaky to me. So it getting smarter than us and kind of controlling and or um, turning on us is always freaky. Do you know what? I'm going to now bring this up in every episode, but there is officially a 60% chance we're already living in a simulation. We, we oh, are the Sims. Oh my God. It's statistically I had that probable. Feeling. Someone, someone's controlling us externally, watching us live wow. out our lives. And we're just little ants scurrying around. I mean, whether we're in a simulation or not, that's kind of true. <laughs> the universe is very large. Well, I mean, I wouldn't mind it if it was a simulation, I guess. We it don't know any no better, so I'm like, whatever, you know, pull the plug. <laughs> this is all we know, so it doesn't make a difference, really. <laughs> yeah. um, how do you feel about aliens? Um, I love aliens. I want them to come. I want the whole shebang. I want them to hover over the city. I want us to know what, not know what's happening. I want um, the world to panic. I want everyone to um, all of a sudden start worshipping them. I want them right. to come down, take over our bodies. I want the whole shebang. Full body snatches. <clears throat> body snatching. But I want that one where it hangs above first for everyone to go like, they're on a different timeline. We want them to come down, get out of the ship, do their thing, hit the road. They're like, no, I'm going to park here mm -hmm. and idle for however long I want and just loom terrifyingly. Like an Independence Day, look up to the sky. Uh-huh. I think that's really creepy. Where for them to come and just not do anything, just to be up there and just say, "We're going to do this on our own time." That's freaking. Yeah, that is kind of scary. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't like the fact that like our technology doesn't work on them. Right. Like we have no defense mechanisms. Well, it's because we got our technology from them. Wait, is that like a real belief, or is this the narrative of the film we're making together right now? 
That is the real belief that the human tools and technology were passed to us by visiting um, aliens. Wait, like at what point? Like, did we do fire or did we do computers? We did fire because that's naturally occurring. They did Stonehenge where they stack the blocks in a circle. And that's the first modem, actually. That's how you, that's the first internet. Somehow those blocks in a circle it's like a big antenna Mm -hmm. any other wonders of the world that you suspect to be secret alien technology i think um that the pyramids are actually a huge giant paperweight on the earth which is the desk of an alien a desk so does that make you a flat earther i guess it's a round desk because I'm definitely not a flat earther. <laughs> okay, it's a big round desk, just like a like a like a bean bag scenario. Yeah. I actually met a flat earther that had no arms or legs because they suffered a horrible infection, and they refused to seek medical treatment because of their belief system, and they lost all their arms and their legs, and it was very sad. They lost their but limbs the, because yeah. the world is flat. Yeah, because their beliefs were so strong that they refused medical treatment and they um, lost their arms and legs from this infection. That's very sad. It was crazy. It was crazy to see how someone's beliefs can be so strong that they would um, forego medical treatment and then and then live the rest of their life in a whole other state because of their belief system. It's, it's pretty wild. Did they express that they'd learned anything from that or were they still adamant they'd done the right thing? They were, they weren't, they never said like, oh yeah, I wish I had gone and got help. They just said, this is what happened. Okay. And they never really, I never really asked like, oh, well, you know, so what do you, how do you feel now? I just kind of Fair. was like, wow, you know, that's crazy. You listened. You weren't invasive. That's nice. I just listened and they were actually smoking a cigarette and they had the most beautiful um, black, sleek hand that um, they smoked the cigarette with as they told the story and it was really, really interesting. Oh my, like that one that Manila had on a hat for all stars. Yes. That feels like a weird way to come full circle back to Drag Race, but also it kind of worked. Good segue. Yeah. I, that is alarming. I watched a TikTok recently where someone was a genuine flat earther and they were saying, your language is offensive, so you need to consider flat earthers. So instead of globally, say, worldwide, um, instead of saying, I love you to the moon and back because the moon isn't real, um, right. say, I love you forever because time is real. I was oh. concerned by this. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. They have to find whole other ways to express themselves. Mm. Like, I love you to the edge of the flat earth and back. Yeah, I think actually they said I love you to the four corners of the earth was the correct way to say it. Oh, that's cute. I like that. A map perspective. Very that. But also confusingly, she said around the world instead of across the globe. And then qualified it in the comments by saying that she believes the earth is flat but round. But then the four corner theory doesn't work if it's round Wow, well, she didn't know that she was dealing with a mathematician, now did she? Because you fucking solved that little riddle. Mama, science, (laughs) boots. Do you know what? We should get her on the podcast. Let's grill grill this flat earther. Yeah, you See how she really feels. Yeah, no, that is wild. How did we get onto flat earthing? Flat earthers. I think because you're actually a flat earther and you're trying to convert me. That's what has happened. I went back to Drag Race so that I could win and use my platform to convert everyone into flat earthers. So mm-hmm. please, we are surrounded by a wall of ice. Antarctica is a lie. Penguins live everywhere. <laughs> the moon is a projection. Um, what else do they think? I don't know. <laughs> so the plane... Oh, yeah. Flight, pl- flight paths are all made up and they all hmm. just go in a straight line. And does the ocean... How does that work with the flat earther? It just goes dips below the earth and then it just pools under there? Yeah, I think it's like like if you put water in a bowl... They're just like, it's just, it's flat. It's just in... Oh. Wait, but a bowl is a hemisphere. Science. Bum, bum, bum. Listen, you can't win. Sorry, Flat Earthers. You're wrong. <laughs> it's been disproven. Um, right, we are coming to the end, but I... No. I know. I don't want to go. <laughs> I 
as David Tennant said at the end of their run as the Doctor in Doctor Who, I don't want to go. Um, what I like to do with all of my guests here on The Final Frontier is a scene, is a moment oh. that we reenact um, based on our conversation. So okay. I feel like we've mostly discussed how we love Drag Race. Okay. But then Look also at us, we, stupid drag queens. Yeah, very <laughs> us, not to be predictable. Um, so whether or not we should do a scene, an iconic argument from Drag Race, or just read from the Wikipedia page about flat earthers. Ooh. I think maybe probably act out a drag race scene. Okay, great. I put on this hair. We've we've got an we've got a change for the acting scene because we are nothing if we are not method. Um <laughs> So we brought Poppy in to read in uh, Mariah Paris Balenciaga's lines. But Jimbo, would you rather be Shangela or Mimi I'm first? I guess this is more Mimi I'm first here. Okay. I'm going to be playing uh, the role of Shangela Laquifa Wadley. Um, mm. um, but I'm going to be doing it in a Northern British accent. Ooh. I'm just making an acting choice. Star of the Final Frontier, Poppy Pearson, will be playing the role of Mariah Paris Balenciaga. In what accent? Um, I can try American. Okay, we're going to go American. Um, and Jimbo, do you have an accent choice for Mimi, I'm first? Um, you have a I think she talks like this. I'm Mimi, I'm first. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Oh, we're doing... We're, we're getting the full look. We're getting the full really Lee Bowery-inspired lip look. See, this I see is giving more Club Kid than Mimi's original version. For anyone who is listening and not seeing the visuals at home, Jimbo has oh. recreated Mimi's iconic look. In Mimi, full. I'm first. I'm here. All right. Okay, we're, we're sight reading, and I find this really difficult. So let's just go for it. <clears throat> Shangela. Okay, I'm in character. Last time on the runway, they asked her, are you going to always be camp? And you told them you could do glamour and you were high fashion. So do you feel that you delivered that today is the question, Mariah? No, but I don't think that was a challenge. Don't tiptoe around the answer. The thing is, you told them you have glamour. Do you think you can go deliver glamour? Because you just told us that what you do is camp. Camp? I was channeling Lee Bowery today. Yeah, girl, it was camp. No, it was Lee Bowery, girl. To students' class, I was wearing, it was Lee Bowery. Those eyes were just glued onto that costume. That's not very good, actually. I think that's quite poor. Oh, the fishnets were ripped. That's what they were. Your fishnets were ripped. Oh, is it my turn? Yes. <laughs> they were not ripped. I was on the runway, girl. Yep, those were ripped fishnets. They were ripped. That's just the truth. I keep it real. I'm Shangela. I know who you are. You don't need a name tag because I know who you are. I know it's not about me knowing who I am. It's the truth. Those fishnets were ripped. Done. But listen. Oh, wait. Wait. You didn't let me speak. Are you going to let me speak? No. You know anyone else who saw the fishnets? They were ripped. They were. John, Who had the most creative idea on the entire night because they were 5,000 Judy Jester's hookers to be H? Wait a minute. Wait, hold up. So I look like a Judy Jetson hooker. So I'm a Judy Jetson hooker. Oh, it was a lot of the same. It was a lot of the same. And you're different. I was a thousand times more creative than anybody here. <laughs> I'm not going to come down the runway looking like you do. I'm gonna be me. What is me and what is you? Look at you, grab a mirror. You can come down the runway and look like you've stepped off Rodeo Drive like a goddamn supermodel. <gasps> I'll never look like that. True, you will never be glamour. Is it, is it over? Oh, no, no, there's, oh, there's no, one wait. more line and then a full monologue for me. Thanks, Poppy. Boo, boo. Just because you got a sugar daddy that pays for everything for you, TBH. Oh, 
I don't have a sugar daddy, sweetheart. Everything that I've had, I've worked for. And I've worked for to get, and I've built myself. So I need you to know 100%, I don't have a sugar daddy. I've never had a sugar daddy. If I want a sugar daddy, yes, I could probably go out and get one because I am what? Sickening. You could never have a sugar daddy because you are not that kind of girl. Maybe everything I've had, I've worked for, and I've gotten myself, I have built myself from the ground up. She throws a beverage. <gasps> Oh, and scene. That was powerful stuff. Wow. I feel like people are going to be moved by this performance. But that's that's all from us, Jimbo. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. I got a makeover too. I, you look wonderful. Do you have anything else on for the rest of the day that you can maintain this look for? Um. Well, it looks like I need to go on a hot date. <laughs> With me, ideally. <laughs> okay. Where are you going to take me? To the Ivy? I'm I'm going to take you to a flat earth convention so we can learn more about <laughs> so why the earth classical. is not a globe. <laughs> no, genuinely, thank you so much for joining me. I've had a wonderful time. I've learned a lot. It was, pleasure. It was um, so fun. Yeah, I'll see you soon. I'll see you around. I'll see you in Canada in a few weeks. Yeah, I'll see you in a few weeks. In Canada? Yes, I'm in Calgary in three weeks' time. Okay, I'll come see you. I'll ride a horse over and visit. Please do. I have a fear of riding horses, true story. Oh, really? Mm. Well, use a saddle. It's easy. <laughs> I'll do my best. Um, Jimbo, can you tell everyone like what you've got coming up, what, what you need to plug, what's going on, what day it is? Um, come see my show in Australia. I'm touring around Australia in uh, August. I'll be down under. Check out itdevents.com for your tickets. And uh, you can follow me at Jimbo the Drag Clown at Instagram. And I have a website, houseofjimbo.com, where you can um, buy my merch and support my brand. Like this cool shirt I'm wearing. Gorgeous. Do you know what? I'm going to buy one. You've inspired me too. Well, you've inspired me to go wash my face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Let's uh, improvise a sign off. Um, thank you for your time. Let Bye. the music play. <laughs> let, let the music play. Bye.